Okay, girlfriend, God of Hard Drives here. I have many hundreds of hard drives, literally, and I've taken apart thousands of hard drives. Um, right now, I'm actually doing a, a data move over from an opened up uh, hard drive, external USB, to another. It doesn't have to be identical, it just happens to be another identical 1.5 uh, terabyte uh, conventional uh, hard drive. Um, I actually got a warning saying that uh, there's too much power being drawn from the USB. A specific USB device had been automatically ejected. Um, immediately uh, unplugged it and I knew what the issue would be. I smelled the casing and actually I could smell a burnt smell. Just took a Swiss Army knife and uh, cracked it open. There's actually nothing inside these external USB uh, hard drive casings uh, other than a conventional hard drive and a SATA bridge. 99.99% .99 of the time the failure is this. This is essentially analogous to the wheels on your car. If the wheels goes bad, you replace the wheels. The car is perfectly fine. This is a little 50 cent piece of Chinese crap that always fails. So when I actually crack this open, they're just four little rubber bumpers. And uh, this, this is another naked hard drive right over here, another 1.5 terabyte uh, hard drive. And what it is, it's plugged in right here. You just unplug it, just like Legos. But before you do that, there'll always be an electrostatic uh, discharge uh, protector wrapped around. You just peel this off and you unconnect it. Everybody should actually have one of these. You have a lot of uh, hard drives, and this is why I use naked hard drive, except for, like, my iMac. I'll actually use encased hard drives just for convenience. This is called a, uh, a USB uh, hard drive dock. This will actually hold uh, up to 3.5 inch, and, of course, currently have a 2.5 inch hard drive in here. It just uh, connects via USB and has a power connector with a little power block. Right now, I'm actually transferring over data from uh, this naked hard drive, which was in this case, yeah, over to here. Um, but uh, repeat after me the most important thing that everybody gets wrong. And I've written articles for Apple on data protection, and uh, let's repeat it three times. Redundancy is God. Redundancy is God. Redundancy is God. Do not ever, ever forget that. Um, people say, well, you know, this is the reason why I'm investing in solid-state drives. Well, solid-state drives are, number one, still expensive. Number two, not enormously big. I mean, do you know how much one and a half terabytes of solid-state drive is? A lot. Solid-state drives actually still undergo the same ferromagnetic depolarization issues as conventional hard drives, roughly the exact same rates. In other words, if you're going to take a perfect hard drive, put a bunch of data on it, and stick it in a hermetically sealed vault, how many years will it take before the data is corrupted to the point that it becomes useless crap? It's about the same between solid-state drives and hard drives. Now, of course, solid-state drives don't suffer from uh, the issues uh, such as uh, uh, mainboard failure, or they don't have motors that actually spin up. And uh, the other thing they don't have issues with is a head, a head uh, crash. They're actually, of course, this head, just like a phonograph needle, that goes over top of uh, the platters, which are coated... Uh, uh, with uh, read-write uh, uh, ferrous layer over top of uh, aluminum discs. And uh, actually one of the secrets when you send in uh, one of your uh, defective hard drives for data recovery is they'll take an identical hard drive, they'll unscrew it, and I've done this many times before. It's a gentle process. You just unscrew it, and you'll take the platters. First, you'll actually take uh, the platters out of the completely new drive, and then you'll, uh, you'll uh, unscrew this. You'll unscrew the uh, the central axle and take out the platter assembly and drop it over into the new hard drive. Because on a, a naked hard drive, 99.9% .9 of failure is either main board failure, which is the circuit board right here, the main motor failure, or head crash. If you want to know if this is really a way to easily diagnose whether your hard drive is defective or not. If it's not making any noises... It's a uh, SATA bridge uh, failure. This is what this is called, SATA bridge. I said just like uh, tires on your car. You know, this is the part that goes bad. Actually, countless, uh, endless uh, thousands of hard drives, people uh, bemoan, they think they're dead. They're not dead at all. It's just this little piece of crap failed, and they think their hard drive died, but it didn't. But um, if it just stops working, no noise, no nothing, it's SATA bridge failure. If it's making a clicking noise, going click, 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 that's called head crash. We call that the click of death. That is actual mechanical failure. And you're going to have to spend an enormous amount of money to have someone like me that knows what the F they're doing to uh, actually retrieve the data by uh, grabbing another identical hard drive if possible or doing uh, data recovery. It's just really, really expensive. 
And the only reason you'd ever be in that situation is if you stupidly only had a bunch of important data on one hard drive. Well, I got a really expensive hard drive, you know, it's perfectly safe there. No, every hard drive on Earth plots to stick a knife right in the base of your neck while you're sleeping. Every hard drive, no matter how expensive it is, is plotting to piss you off and destroy your data. And repeat after me once again. Redundancy is God. Redundancy is God. Redundancy is God. Two is one and one is none. Let's repeat that again. Two is one, one is none. And uh, there's a reason why our archival optical, and I don't mean the crap DVD discs that you get at Best Buy, I mean archival optical, is so incredibly important because other than a super, super expensive tape backup is, by the way, still a thing. If you're like a mega company, you store enormous amounts of data, tape backup is still huge. But there's only one way that you could actually stick your data like in a safe and like 20 years later, you know it's still there or even five years later. And that's archival optical. And then, of course, stupid people always say to me, well, nobody burns DVD discs anymore. I said, if they're smart, they do. And I don't mean conventional DVD discs. I mean archival optical. Repeat after me, archival optical. It means you stick that data. And I don't mean everything, you know, like your movies and your music. I mean the stuff that you have like a holy crap moment, like I can't lose this data. No matter what, I can't lose this data, period. That sort of holy crap data. That is the stuff you burn onto archival optical. Now, archival optical discs are more expensive. Yeah, you probably still have a DVD burner. They average, like for a stack of 100 of archival optical, about 60 bucks. If they're the really, really good stuff, you know, 80 bucks upwards. Um, there's new uh, discs called M discs. They actually have a mineral read write layer. And those are good uh, for a thousand years, presumably. Uh, countless governments uh, uh, and uh, secret uh, little agencies across the world are putting their really, really, really top secret crap onto M disks because archival optical in the world of data is like a sexy chick that's like six foot, you know, it's like a supermodel. Archival optical data storage is super sexy. People that know what I'm talking about know exactly how sexy it is. Because people that know how a hard drive works, they know every hard drive on Earth is plotting to stick a knife in the back of your neck while you sleep and destroy your data. Every single one. Now, if this hard drive had failed, it doesn't make any difference because I've got a redundant backup. I've actually got two redundant backups. So this is what a professional does. If like their hard drive, they don't have to worry about data recovery. If like a professional has their hard drive fail like this, which this one didn't. It was just a SATA bridge that failed. This is what a professional does. They're like, screw it. Here's my backup copy. I'm just going to put that in its place. I'm going to take this, throw it in the garbage. Done. It's over with. This is what stupid people do when they have hard drive failure. They've only got all their data on one disk. Oh, my God. My data. Oh, my God. My data. Oh, my God. And then they worry, and then they spend a fortune sending their hard drive off to some idiot who will screw around with it for a month or two, charge you an enormous amount of data, uh, uh, money, and you probably still won't get your data back, or probably not, not all of it. See, you're an idiot, because redundancy is God, redundancy is God. Always have multiple backups. And by the way, learn the difference between backups and archives, because they're not the same. A backup is not an archive, an archive is not a backup. Learn the difference. Yes. So these are words of wisdom from the hard drive God. And by God, yes, I am the hard drive God, girlfriend. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, peace out, Girl Scout. Bye.